delivered his servants. The first reading, a reading from the book of prophet Daniel. Daniel chapter 3, verse 14 to 20, 24 to 25, and 28. In those days, King Nebuchadnezzar said, Is it true, O Shadrach, Mesach, and Abnego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image I have set up? Now if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, iri, trigon, harp, and bagpipe, and every kind of music to fall down and worship the image, which I have made well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be cast into a burning fury furnace. And who is the God immediately? And who is the God that will be deliver, will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Mesach, and Abnego answered the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in the matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fury furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand. O king, but if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression of his face was changed against Shadrach, Mesach, and Abnego. He ordered, he ordered the furnace heated seven times more than it was accustomed to be heated. And he ordered certain mighty men of his army to bind Shadrach, Mesach, and Abnego, and to cast them into the burning fury furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up in haste. He said to his, to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the fire? The, they answered the king, True, O king, he answered, But I see four men lose, walking in the midst of the fire and they are not hurt and their appearance of the fourth and the appearance of the fourth is like a son of the gods nebuchadnezzar said blessed be the god of shadrach mesach and abnego who has set his angel and delivered his servant who trusted in him and set at note the king's command and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any God except their God. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. The response to the psalm. You are to be praised and highly exalted forever. You are to be praised and highly exalted forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of our fathers, and to be praised and highly exalted forever. And blessed is your glorious holy name, and to be highly praised and highly exalted forever. Response. You are to be praised and highly exalted forever. Blessed are you, to, are you in the temple of your holy glory. And to be extolled and highly glorified forever. Response. You are to be praised and highly exalted forever. Blessed are you upon the throne of your kingdom and to be extolled and highly exalted forever response you are to be praised and highly exalted forever blessed are you who sit upon cherubim and look upon the deeps and to be praised and highly exalted forever response you are to be praised and highly exalted forever Blessed are you in the famine, firmament, in the firmament of heaven, and to be sung and glorified forever. Response: You are to be praised and highly exalted forever. Good morning, viewers of Uganda Catholic Television. This morning, I'm Reverend Father Edward Kabanda from Chuamilembe, a shrine to Our Lady Queen of Peace located in Kajansi, Wakiso district. Viewers, I'm in the studios once again <clears throat> to take the gospel reading 
and also to give a brief reflection on the word of God. Today is Wednesday of the fifth week of Lent, the gospel reading. <clears throat> A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John, chapter 8, verse 31 to 42. At that time, Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, <clears throat> we are descendants of Abraham and have never been in, in bondage to anyone. How is it that you, you say you will, you will be made free? Jesus answered them, truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not continue in the house forever. The son continues forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are descendants of Abraham, yet you seek to kill me, because my word finds no place in you. I speak of what I have seen with my father, <clears throat> and you do what you, you have heard from your father. They answered him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would not do what Abraham did. You would do what Abraham did. But now you seek to kill me. A man who has told you the truth which I heard from God. This is not what Abraham did. You do the works of your father. They said to him, we were not born of fornication. We have one father even God. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me, for I proceed and I came forth from God. I came not on my own accord, but he sent me. The gospel of the Lord. Dear viewers, as we reflect on the word we have heard from Prophet Daniel, chapter 3, verse 14 to 20, and also from the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verse 31, I want to remind you of this beautiful word from our Lady of Chibeho in Rwanda. In one of the messages of our mother Mary in Chibeho, she said, none, none, no one enters heaven without suffering. No one enters heaven without suffering. And belief, that's what we call salvific suffering. Today's reading is a reflection of this. We have been given the examples of Mesach, Sadrach and Abinego, who suffered for their faith during the time of King Nebuchadnezzar, who wanted them, who forced them to worship false gods. But they did not. They remain faithful to God of Israel. It is the same in the gospel. We see Jesus facing a lot of resistance from the fellow Jews. To the extent of even denying him, rejecting him. And even stoning him. But in all of this suffering, we learn the following. One, be firm in your faith. Brothers and sisters who are viewing this program, I invite you to know that in life you are going to face a lot of storms which will distract you. Such forms of storms, we have corruption of the present time, theft, greed, people designing position. But I invite you, fellow believers, be firm in your faith I can miss such Abinegu and Sadrach. They remain faithful to God, even in trial moments. If we do that, we shall go through suffering with hope and victory. The second message I have for you this morning is always speak the truth. 
in all suffering we, we face is because we don't speak that truth. But Jesus is reminding us in the gospel that the truth will set us free. Brothers and sisters, let us stop telling lies. For instance, if you go to the doctor and you don't tell him where you are facing the challenge, he will give you wrong medicine. But if you tell him what you are going through, I believe you always receive what you deserve and you'll be okay again. So brothers and sisters, if you want always to be free, let us speak the truth. Whether they accept it or not, always say the truth. The second, the third message I have for you, whenever you are facing suffering, change your mind and for the truth you have discovered. Like a King Nebuchadnezzar. In the first reading when King discovered that the God of Mesach, Abinego, and Sadrach was more powerful, he changed the mind. That's why he glorified God. We too, we are invited to change our mind whenever we have discovered the truth. And this will help you to be free. So, let us do the same. Don't hesitate and say, it does not co correspond to me, but allow the truth to set you free. Another message we learn from the, today's readings is that your enemies will see the glory of God coming to you. In all suffering we go through, never forget that it is there for a purpose. So I just invite you always surrender it to God and you see the glory of God coming down to you, and even the enemies will see it. That's what we see in the first reading. When they, these three believers, faithful people of God, when we were put in the finance, the glory of God came down to them. To the extent that even Nebuchadnezzar was showed what was happening in the finance, that there is someone who came to join them, the angel of the Lord. And that's why King Nebuchadnezzar was able to say, from today, let the God of Israel be glorified. It happens to us even when we are going through suffering. That those who trust God, I assure you, they will see the glory of God coming to you. And even your enemies will glorify the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word and we thank you for this latent observance and we thank you that you are listening to us. Like a message, Abnego and Sadrach, we come to you asking you to be with us in our trial moments, in our suffering and may we never grow weary of what we face but always be with us to the end. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.